Hello everyone. So we are going to be starting a new series of video tutorials using OpenJSCAD to model some quite interesting 3D printable glove, keyboard glove. So all these tutorial videos will be using the V1 of OpenJSCAD, so the one that's currently available. Uh, but we will be using the new UI, which also incorporates the ability to use Node's modules to split up your designs. So, uh, thanks for listening, and let's get started. So, the design that we're going to try to make in this uh, series of tutorials and videos is this. So, this is not a design by me, so I've been asked to do this. And it's kind of a very nice project. So. We're going to go to quite a few steps before we can have something like this in 3D and 3D printable. So let's get started. So first things first, we're going to go through some basics of OpenJSCAD itself. So uh, OpenJSCAD is a parametric, because it can provide parameters, uh, 3D and 2D modeling software where you use code to define the shapes that you want. Uh, it uses JavaScript and in order not to get lost, uh, we're going to well get started with some basics. So as you can see, you just start with a function, main function, the naming is quite important which you export as you would expect from common JS modules. And uh, I already started here a little dev server with a test instance. And I'm gonna drag and drop here the development file, which I already prepared. So it's gonna be this one. Uh, just a second. No, it's my bad. Sorry. So, or we're going to just put this to the top. That makes it easier. Drag and drop. Of course, we have no output just yet, but you can see here the name updated, so it registered the design correctly. So it's just drag and drop. There's no actual online component. This is all running locally. So let's minimize this. And so I have this one. And go back to it later. <clears throat> so back to the main function. So what you're returning is either a single item or an array. Uh, it's a good idea to always work with arrays. So let's just try by exporting a very simple cube. As you can see, I already added some imports. Don't worry too much about the details of those. So you, I'm just save this and it automatically updates here. So I'm going to keep it around so you can see things. And all of these are just functions. So it's very important to remember that it's always functions and very simple concepts. There's no object oriented thing. It's always very simple. So for example, you can provide some parameters to that. If you want, of course, a cube of a specific size, like this one. So this would mean 10 units. Uh, I usually tend to think it's millimeters, but it's really up to you in the end. Uh, 10 millimeters uh, on the x-axis, 5 millimeters on the y-axis, and the last one is always z-axis, so it's one. So let's just save this, and as you can see, change size quite a bit. Let's recenter it. So that seems a bit too big on that axis, so let's just resize it in a bit thicker, perhaps on that one. And that's being updated live. <clears throat> so next up, we could also, I don't know, why not export also a sphere out of here. Uh, of course, the sphere is going to be, I think, a bit too small, so inside the cube. So there. I just comment that out, and as you can see, this is literally just returning an array, nothing particular. Don't worry about the commented out part, we'll get to that in quite a bit. So, if we wanted, for example, 
to have a bigger sphere so that it's also visible. So let's define its radius, I don't know, 20. It seems quite big, but uh, let's see about that. Uh, yes. So as you can see, there's also the notion of centering. So by default, spheres are centered like this. Uh, cuboids or cubes are not. Uh, this is a long discussion about where these kind of languages or were popularized or by OpenSCAD, which has some weird centering quirks. But hey, so let's imagine we want to move that either that sphere or the sphere and the rectangle here, cuboid, to somewhere else. So in order to place things in your design, you can use rotation, translation, mirroring, and scaling, and things like that. So let's for example, just translate, sorry, translate the cube here. So it's again just a function which takes a few parameters. So the first parameter is how much you want to move or translate your object around. So I don't know, let's keep it zero, zero, and move it a bit higher five units and what do you want to translate well that's the second parameter and that's our cube so let's just save this and there you go the cube was lifted by five units so again assuming millimeters from now on so i won't repeat that let's clean up a bit and there you have it so you can move that around you could also move it on this axis for example if you want to move it by its half Let's move it by or oh, wrong direction. It's always important to remember that the three axes here, or the sort of reds, blue, and green axes, are the positive directions. So let's move it in the other way, and this should be centered on that axis, as you can see. Uh, we can also move it on the other axis, so this would be minus 2.5 if we want to be precise and then it's halfway there uh, the interesting thing is you can also uh, pass arrays as inputs to operations so translate could be just a single item like this or you could be moving both your cube and your sphere so let's just move them to an array here an array of parameters and there you go, a bit of cleanup, and then you'll see that they have both been moved. Uh, so, an important thing to remember, so that uh, in order for things to be practical, you usually want to quite quickly move things to a function. But, yeah, the simplest thing, for example, imagine you want to create multiple parts like this for some reason. Well, what you can do is simply take this piece of, piece of code that you just created and then move it to a function. So you can call it very urgently my function. It doesn't really matter for now. And then you're just going to return this translated set of cube and sphere. Of course, if we just save it like this, then we're not returning anything from the main function again. So the software is not very happy about this. So let's just call it here. And now it's everything's OK again. <clears throat> so what can we do, for example, with this? Well, we could create another one that's being translated again by, uh, let's make it a bit bigger here, like this. And let's call function again so I'm going to move this out of the way and there you have it you have two identical pieces again just using very simple functions there's nothing fancy or complex going on as long as you remember it's just functions and very simple data structures so let's get into some other aspects so <clears throat> you can rotate translate and mirror things so for example let's rotate this and again nothing specific 
it's just so don't pay attention to the autocomplete it tends to go a bit haywire it's actually a function again with three parameters again x y z axis so we're let's just rotate it on, on one axis only and you can see since we did this in the function which we're gonna call my part because it's actually returning well a part that you can then 3d print something like that so there you go so this did it for both so you can see your rotate is also quite simple uh, likewise you can use scale as well so you can change chain these operations like this so let's scale it by and let's make it twice as small on one axis and let's keep the other axis the same. Just remember that for scaling, one is the normal value. So if you want um, one dimension not to change, you need to use one instead of zero. So it's easier than to organize in like this. You can see nice chaining. Uh, in case you wonder, we do intend to provide some ways to chain this uh, like with a pipe operator and things like that so those are pun intended sort of already in the pipeline of course here as you can see it's now complaining that there's no scale so let's just import scale and there as you can see the, the the cuboid has been scaled down on one axis. So <clears throat> there's also some quite important thing. You also have the ability, which is quite important, to be able to subtract and uh, merge shapes together. So that would be union and difference. And there's also intersection, but that's usually used less but we'll also see that in a bit. So, and just a second, I need to take a short break to get some water. Be right back. So, let's continue. So, we're going to import knobs so imagine that instead of just having sphere there by the way i'm going to remove the scaling because it's uh, making things a bit confusing for now so let's move these around <clears throat> so instead of having the sphere just hanging around there why not for example place a hole in the center of the cube so what we're going to do is instead of returning here a translation of both of these, we're going to return a difference. So let's just keep the array for now because even if it's just one item, it's always going to happen. So the first item will be the rotated cube. And the second will be the sphere. So we just move it here. And again, we can just change things like this. So the first operand is the rotated cube and the second is sphere. And you can see it just seems like the mouse chew off a bit of your cube. So let's move that a bit so we can change the position. And of course, what we want here is to be at the center of the cube. So for now, we're going to hard code that. So for 2.5 and 1, and of course I'm going to do the negative values. There you go. <coughs> Sorry about that. Uh, so I just noticed I made a mistake. I used radius, and it actually should be R. So this is one of those um, coherency issues that we're having, that we're fixing for the new version, because we believe it's better to have a single version so always using uh, longer but more explicit variable names so that will be made more coherent uh, for the new version so i changed it to r 
and we're not seeing this here still so let's see for example let's make it a bit smaller and as it's always text you can very easily edit things to make it simpler for you for example i just basically kept the transition but set it all to zero so that's as if you weren't moving anything so the this should be okay we can also go with this like a big eared thing but one thing to notice here is this was a basic mistake on my part if you take a close look you're basically doing a difference between a rotated cube and a translated sphere but the sphere is not being rotated so we can do this a few ways so let's check it out for example you can move it by small increments and it's moving away but it's not being rotated upwards of course so it could be a bit confusing like this so what we're going to do here is just change the order of operations around to make it work better so what if instead of having the difference of a rotated cube and a translated sphere we actually want the whole part to be rotated so that would be rotating a cube with a hole in it so what we're going to do is move the difference here again it's very easy in a way once you understand the basic concepts because you can just move the order of your functions around so we have a rotation of a difference between a cube and our little sphere and there we go we have everything that we need normally so we still have the same things but now they will be placed correctly and now if we translate for example sphere oh, i moved it out too much so there it's better so let's move it here and the other way as well so it's starting to look like something interesting right so we have these two nice little parts and let's just reduce the size of the sphere to make it more manageable and hey what are we building again oh yes a keyboard so how about we move this a bit upwards to the other side there and there then we can rename this to key because of course we want many keys in our keyboard i'm doing manual editing here because it makes things easier so something you might have noticed here is that at least for these or if i put it like this or it's in the center to a slightly bigger one then you'll see what i mean so we're actually reusing these same coordinates or basic points over and over again so this is one good case of moving that to a parameter and for now let's assume that we only have one parameter for our key and that's the dimension so we're gonna put it like this with some nice defaults and then we can simply reuse it here and thanks to the nice new javascript syntax you get something quite readable and compact uh, this of course is as you can see quite similar but the translation is a bit different so let's keep that as it is for now but this is exactly half of the size so we can for example use size dot map x x times 0 0.5 and if i haven't made another mistake then it should be Yes, exactly as it was so now what we can do is so we are doing two identical keys here so 
how about we have another key or the second key that's a bit different size wise so let's put it at and then you'll immediately see that I made another small mistake because for example the size of the sphere is not being adapted to the size of the key so how about we just use the Z so the third times 0 0.5 so that it's always half of the size perhaps a bit exaggerated and there you go now you have a keyhole here that is adapting to the array that you pass in for your, the size of your key so this was some of the basics and really the most of the other operations are just similar things like you can also create cylinders you can color your shapes you can use union which is uh, instead of creating holes you just combine things there are a lot of basic operations and primitives that you can use and i'm not going to go into detail into all of them because there are quite a few but you tend to reuse the basics over and over again so to finish this first session, uh, let's just uh, finish some cleanup work. So I think it would make more sense to have uh, this be actually half of it. So, no, sorry. So minus one, minus the dimension. So that it's centered because then we can just move things upward and move things around yes, as you notice the parameters are different so this is how we will place things also down the line so this means that we can reuse also this with a little bit of twist of course and perhaps you guessed it yes minus 0 0.5 there so now they're going to place according to their dimensions. This is why the small one moved. And yes, I think uh, that concludes the first part of the tutorial. This was just really a quick walkthrough of some of the basic aspects. We're going to see some more complicated things and we're going to go deeper into actually designing the glove in the next few parts of the tutorial. Thank you for watching. Bye.